Yeah, Ark doesn't understand the shotguns are close range weapons. So in this particular case, <laughs> that works in our advantage. <laughs> There's no way I should have hit that bird with a shotgun from that range. Oh, man, I love it. Welcome back, everybody, to Ark Survival Ascendant. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we're going to start off uh, by doing a mind wipe and then doing some high-level crafting. I'm not entirely sure if I have all of the mats I need to do everything we need to do, but uh, if I don't, I'll just, you know, go farm up some more before we uh, respec back into our normal configuration. Uh, all right, so the first thing we're going to do is go into here, grab this uh, mind wipe soup, and I actually need, uh, we're going to need two of these. So let's make a second one so it's ready to go. And we need all of that stuff. So let's grab some cooked prime. And the flowers and shrooms are in here. Flowers and shrooms. And I I think we have everything else already in here. Uh, oh yeah, turn on. All right, so let's make one more of those. Okay. All right, let's uh, consume this one. Boom. We are reset. Grab this and put it. Um, I'll put it in here for for now. What we're gonna do? is uh, we're going to put every single point we have into crafting. So let's do it. All right, so that gives us 1130% um, crafting. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Now let's also, uh, let's grab one of these which will make the crafting faster. And um, yeah, so so we're gonna start with this stuff. Uh, so let's drink that. So the first thing I'm gonna make in here is an Ascendant Long Neck. It's normally 361.2%. Let's see what we get. Really? <laughs> That's all you're gonna give me? Oh man, I was expecting way better than that. Um, okay, how expensive is this? Let's... I gotta, I gotta prioritize here. Um, these two are the most, really, honestly, the most important because... And maybe even that, a couple of those. Just because we need these for our armies. Um... I really want to make this specifically... So let's actually make that next, and we might come back to another attempt at the long neck. Uh, that was, yeah, that was just a shit roll, man. Okay, so that's going to need uh, 1,300 and some odd metal. Uh, I went out and farmed up a whole bunch of polymer. Uh, so I got, whoa, yeah, that is a whole bunch of polymer, isn't it? Of course, I have no weight now. Um, let's... Let's hang on to this polymer unless we need it. Okay, let's let's hope we roll something better with this. There we go. Look at that. 334% out of 286. That was a damn good roll. Uh, okay. Let's go ahead and do the pistol next. Uh, just because it's such a high-level pistol already and uh, would be nice to have. So what we get? 525? Okay. That doesn't suck. And then let's also do this compound bow because, again, the damage is just so high on it. I can't pass up that, that opportunity. Oh, man. I don't know, though. Look how damned expensive that thing is. Uh, okay, hold on. I want to look something up real quick. I'm checking Dota Dex on a 150 Rex. 
Um, with with a 511 percent compound bow, it would take 25 arrows and um 0.3 percent chance of death. With a 360, we'll just go with this one because we're we're probably going to try for a little bit something a little bit better. But a 364 percent uh, long neck with tranquilizer dots will only take 10 on a 150 Rex and no chance of death. So, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not really going to use the compound bow for damage. I mean, I could, but why? Right. I mean, I've got good shotguns. I've got good gun guns. Um, so yeah, it, I can't justify making this. It's just too expensive. We'll hang on to the blueprint, obviously, because you never know, right? But, um, yeah, we're putting that back. I just can't justify making that. So, yeah, I think that's all we're going to make in here. Uh, while we're here, let's repair all this stuff. And then we'll go back to the smithy and, and make that stuff in there. Let's put this poly back in here for the moment into our little snail fridge. And then we're going to need um, all of this metal back in here. Okay, I'm going to roll the dice one more time with this long neck. And let's hope we get something a little bit better. There we go. Look at that. 449. Massive improvement. Massive improvement. Okay, so just for the hell of it, um, I'm going to change the Dota Dex to 449, and that reduces it down to 8 darts. So we can knock out a max level Rex with only 8 shocking darts with that rifle, uh, or about 16 normal trank darts. That's really good, because that's what I'm going to use it for. I'm going to use it for team. I'm not going to use it for damage. Um, the reason I'm not using that for damage, like as a sniper rifle, is because we got uh, we got this puppy right here. Uh, so there's no reason to. Okay, cool. So that uh, worked out pretty well. This will just be a backup a long neck. Um, or what we could maybe do... Um, we could just take these two and recycle them and get some of the mats back. Uh, because I can always make another one of these again in the future, you know, if we die. Like, you know, say in the Artifact of the Skylord Cave, for example. <laughs> that was bad. Um, and, you know, the funny thing about that, too, is I was watching, I was editing the video after the fact. And I'm watching it, and it was very obvious to me that there that there was a, a, a trench there uh, that I was about to fall in. But for whatever reason, while I was in the moment, I didn't see it. I just plain didn't see it. Oh, man. Whatever. <clears throat> okay, so... Yeah, why don't we... I would never, ever do this if I didn't have blueprint for these, right? But I do. So let's recycle these. And, yeah, see, we got th we got 300 metal back out of the deal. So... That doesn't suck. Okay. Very good. All right, now, the next thing we're going to do is... We're going to let's see what are we what are we wearing right now or what do we have right now for flak armor? Let's actually just put it on for the moment, if I can even move after having it all on. Okay. So These aren't actually a blueprint. I just straight up found those. These I did make from these, but we can make a little higher quality. And this I made from those. Here's the thing, though. I mean, should I do that or not? Um, I'm thinking I should probably save the metal because we we need this, the saddles. I mean, you know, let's say I bump this up another 50 points, even 100 points. Uh, these are already so damn good that it's going to make very little difference. 
Yeah, I, I think I'm going to hold off on those. I can always do it in the future. You know, one of my one of my problems when it comes to metals, I, I just don't have a very good Anki, and I'm working on that. Uh, but my Ankies have really low melee damage, so it just means it takes that much longer to, you know, to do stuff. So I think we're going to hold off on those. Now, this is incredibly expensive um, when it comes to pelt. If I make this, it's going to use up all my pelt, but it would give us a really, really good pair of fur leggings to go into the ice cave with. The question, though, is am I going to actually need them? It kind of depends upon how many points I put back into Fortitude, which I, I haven't decided yet. So I think what I'll do with those uh, is let's leave them in, in for a second and come back to them later. Uh, we're done with this. And, um, okay, so the sword. Right now I, I have just a sword made straight from that blueprint for 234 damage. Um, how much is this going to cost me? Yeah, let, let's roll the dice with one of these. See what happens. 288. Okay. Um, reasonable uh, improvement. You know, reasonable improvement. And here again, you know, the good thing about all of this is I can always make these again later. It's just, you know, you just have, I just have to do the respec and let's see how much metal we get back from this one. 150. Okay. I just have to do the respec and gather all the materials, but so, you know, there's a, a fairly good chance that we'll be doing this again, maybe even more than once, just because we'll, we'll continue to come across more blueprints too. But what we really need right now is we need these saddles for our berry army before we'd make our first attempt at the ice cave. And all of these berries out here, well, uh, all of the berries kind of on the right hand side, they're a little bit mixed up right now are fully leveled is pretty much as high as I can get them. They might have a few more points and they all have a minimum of 8,000 health and 800 melee and some a little bit higher. These guys, I'm still in the process of leveling. Um, and I'm just doing that by taking them to the swamp cave, which is just really works out so well because, you know, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm getting really good loot from the swamp cave and leveling these guys too. But all that to say, um, you know, and, and everybody's fully imprinted too, by the way. So all of these berries are fully imprinted. So all that to say, um, this is the first army we're going to take into the ice cave. Now, if we go into the ice cave and we just get our ass handed to us, well, then I've got a whole batch of berries in here that we can continue breeding to make a stronger army. But I'm not, I'm not breeding these guys at the moment. Uh, because I want to just see how well we do with what we currently have, right? But none of these, uh, no, I take that back. They all have one health mutation and one stamina mutation, but we still have room, you know, to grow in terms of, of mutations. And, and I also still have the original base pairs with no mutations if the absolute worst scenario happened and we had to start all over again. Okay, so anyway, uh, a lot of that, a lot of messing around, but here's the thing. We, we, we want to take an eight pack of sharks into the Western Sea Cave. The thing that's going to be different this time from last time is all of the sharks are going to have 15,000 health. Uh, that's what I'm going to level them to instead of 10. And instead of having a basic saddle, they're all going to have this, these ascendant saddles which is going to make them incredibly so much stronger than they were before. Um, and we're going to have at least, we're going to have a, a, a mate boosted pair of Basilosaurs that are also imprinted. Um, so we're going to start by making eight of these. And, you know, we're going to take whatever we get. <laughs> Excuse me, because I can't afford to, uh, <laughs> to make more than that at this point. So everything we get will be, oh my goodness, look at that. Holy crap, that added a hundred more. Oh no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> I was looking at this one. Um, still very good though. Wow. Okay, that's even better. Let's see what we continue to get here. 177, okay. So all of those saddles are significantly better than the original blueprint. 
150, okay, that was not as good, but still good. It's all just a gamble here. A 178, okay. 185 is our highest so far. Uh, what was... That was, was that 185? No, I think that was a 155, okay. It's not putting them in alphabetical order. 145, okay, that one's... I mean, by by way of comparison, kind of sucks, but it's still a good saddle. No, no doubt about it. And then I think we've got... Uh, I don't know what we got. Okay, anyway, those those are our saddles for our shark army. Okay, cool. Um, now, I already have one Ascendant Basilor, uh, Basilosaur saddle uh, that I found in loot, but I'm in planning on taking a mated pair um, into the caves when we're ready to do that. And I don't think I have anything else for Bassies. Yeah, so there's nothing else. So we're going to make one of these for our second Basilosaur. A 96. Okay, not bad. Not bad. And then I think, that, you know, this one's still kind of on hold, but I think for the rest of, the, of our material here, we're going to make as many of the Mastercraft Berry Saddles as we can. And I don't, I don't know exactly how many of these guys I'm going to take into the ice cave. At some point, you know, you just, you, you can't take all of them because it'll just be an absolute cluster. So let's just see how many saddles we can make to start with. <coughs> we can only make four. Okay, well, <coughs> excuse me, that decides that then. We'll see what we're going to... I'm sure it's going to be metal, probably. That we're gonna, well, maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Okay, that one came out at 81. One thing we're really going to have to try and do is... That one's 90. Is, you know, if these sharks died, all we need to try and retrieve these saddles if we can, because... Oh, my goodness, they're expensive. Uh, 91. Okay. And uh, 90.6. Okay, what are we short on? Oh, fiber? Dude. I got fiber. I got your fiber. All right, how many more of these can we make? Another four. Okay. If we sort these alphabetically. Ooh, nice. 101.2. Whichever one of these is the highest will be the on the dyno that I ride. Okay, so 99.3, or no, 101, yeah, 101.2 is, is the best one. All right, what are we short now? Now we're short metal. Okay, and did I grab all the metal out of here? It looks like I did. Don't think I have any left in here or in here. All right, cool. So, yeah, we'll we'll put these on hold for now. Um, well, how many how much metal does it require? 500. Damn. We'll put these on hold for now. Um, because the saddles are more important and potentially come back to those at another point in time. All right. So, we still have gobs of fiber and gobs of hide. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the camera here. I'm going to go out and farm up a bunch more metal. And I, I've, I have some more breeding stuff I have to tend to as well. I'll bring you guys back a little later. And uh, we'll continue to pump out some more of these baryonic saddles and just see, you know, how many how many we can pump out. I, we, we're, we already got eight, which is good. But I, I'm thinking for, for some reason I have the number 12 in my head for the berries that we're going to take into the cave. The other thing, too, if I didn't already mention this to you guys, is we're, we're going to be taking a Daton in that cave with us, too, for heals. Uh, maybe even a pair of Datons, you know, main boosted pair. Um, So, yeah. Okay, I'll see you guys here in a little while. All right, guys, I'm back. And uh, we have farmed up a bunch more metal. I still have uh, quite a bit. Uh, more cooking up in here too, uh, but I need some of that for ammunition to make ammunition for the new weapons. Uh, so we should have enough 
metal to make four more baryonic saddles. That'll give us a total of 12. Um, what do I want? Yeah, I want a, a chili. And, um, yeah, so let's do that first, and then we'll see where we are. So we want four more of those. Right now, 99? No, 101, too, is our our best uh, saddle. Okay, so it looks like 101, too, is, is still the winner on that. Um, we, need, we, st we have enough metal now to make one of these. Uh, so let's make this Ascendant Fur Legging. And that turned out to be 2015. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, and I'm short on pelt for this, so I'm going to have to go farm up some more pelt. But I don't, I don't think I want to do that. I don't think I want to go into the uh, winter biome with no points <laughs> in my own, you know, for myself. Uh, that would be very dangerous. So, all right. I think that's going to wrap up our, our uh, high-level crafting for now. Like I said, more than likely, we will be doing this again in the future uh, as we get more blueprints and so forth. I did uh, I did put a hollow sight on the new pistol and the new assault rifle, uh, but I need to make... I need to make ammunition uh, for these. I just really like the hollow sight. Um, it's, it's kind of, it's basically my favorite attachment, uh, aside from, you know, a scope too. And this actually does zoom, so it has a little bit of a scope uh, feel to it, which is cool. And and then this baby here, man, woo wee, 449 damage. That is what you call a beautiful long neck rifle. So, yeah, uh, so I think what we're going to do now is we're going to respec back into our, uh, well, actually, I should say our new configuration, because I'm going to change things up a little bit. So let's go here and grab the Mind Wipe Tonic. And we'll drink that. There we go. Okay, so we have 103 points to spend. I had, my health was at 150, and I think we're going to stick with that. So let's put that up to 150. Um, I just don't really have a big need for stamina. It does, you know, when you're in the ocean though, it does drain down slowly, even when you're mounted. Uh, so let's let's come back to that. I'm not gonna put points into O2. We already have 150 by default, and that's pretty damn good. I'm not gonna do food and water, even though it's a pain in the ass to have to eat and drink all the time. It's just there's more important things I want points into. Um, the real big ones are going to be weight and fortitude and potentially melee damage but even that's um you know that, well there's a few situations where we are using melee but even even in those situations we still have our guns too so um let's do let's get fort up to 50 i had it at 62 i'm going to get this up to 50 and I, I was very low on my weight, though, so I don't remember exactly what I had, but I think I want... Let's get this up to at least 300. All right, so where does that leave us? Fortitude, mainly damage. We could go... Yeah, we, yeah, we probably better... Let's get this up to 150. I think that's where I had it before. Okay, so that still gives us 48 points to spend here. Um, I guess melee damage or more weight. Uh, or more health. Yeah, let's get our health up to 200. So that's 50 higher than what it was before. And let's... Do I want to put points into melee damage? Ah, man, I don't know. What do we get? Let's put one point into it. Oh, we get five per. Okay. Yeah, let's bring this back up to where it was, 150. And that still leaves us 33 points. Which I'm probably going to put into weight again. Or what we could do... Damn it. Here, let's do this. Let's put, it, let's put another 10 points into fort. 
that gets us to 60. We're, we were at 62 before. We have 200 health. Why don't we go 250 health? Now let's go 300 health. And then the rest I'm putting into weight. Okay. So that gets us uh, up to 480 on the weight, which is quite a bit more than I had before. And we're... You know what? I, don't, I, I guess I don't remember what my health was before. I'll have to go... I could go back and look in the video, I suppose. But I, I only had that at 150, which seems awfully low. Um, fortitude back to 60. So we're only two points less than what we were before here. I'm just trying to think. I must have been higher in health because... I'm not that far off from what I was before. We did put a lot more points in weight, though, than we had before. So, okay. So, yeah, that's our new uh, our new configuration, our new spec uh, for our character uh, with quite a bit more weight because that's just been such a hassle, you know, not having enough weight. Uh, all right. So, let's see here. I need to get... I got a, I got a million things to do. I mean, there's so many things to do. So it's just really kind of a matter of, of what what to do next, you know. Um, this Giga here has a double, got a double mutation. They got a mutation uh, both in stamina and in melee. Um, and then this gig has a mutation in health. So I had mentioned that to you guys that I wasn't planning on breeding gigas for any other purpose other than eggs but i might change my mind on that we might actually try and start some stack stacking some mutations on these guys uh we still need to find something higher in the wild though but if we do then we can you know tame it bring it home and then transfer those mutations onto it and you know come up with a potentially very very powerful dino um so I think we'll do that. You know, since we have some time, you know, we don't. Scorch Earth isn't supposed to come out till March now. Uh, we're not really in a hurry, and so why the hell not, right? I think we. I think we'll do that. Um. All right. Let's see. I here's some things we need to do. I want. I want to find a female Pelagornis, mate the two, and then get an imprinted Pelagornis, um, just because. You know, these are these guys are the best, you know, gathering organic polymer, but this one's still sorta of, kinda of weak. So if we got one that was even with the same stats, but imprinted, it would be 30% better, you know, in, in terms of damage. Uh, so I, that's on the list to do. I need I need to do a lot more swamp cave runs with um, you know with all of these guys over here and get them fully leveled. Then we're going to take our berry army to the ice cave. Um, I, by the way, I created a path through the redwoods there down to the river and laid foundations down so stuff didn't respawn. I don't even know if I showed that to you guys or not. But yeah, that goes all, just in a straight line all the way down to the river uh, following these foundations, which I set uh, 20, 20 foundations apart um, all the way down. Yeah, see, it's right there. So I did that just because... It was really hard getting, you know, back up here from the river, you know, coming up that way. And, uh, yeah, so I made the pathway there. And I'm just, I'm just trying to think what I want to do for the rest of this video. I'm not sure how much time we actually have left. Uh, I'll tell you what, what. Kind of my main goal for today, just for me to do, you know whether we do it on camera or not, is to get started with the Eastern Sea Base because I'm just running out of room at the Western Sea Base. I'm going to keep the Western Sea Base too, but um, so I, I think what I'm going to do is gather up all the stuff that I need um, and meet you guys over at the new site and uh, we'll start, uh, we'll at least get started on the Eastern Sea Base uh, to wrap up the rest of this episode. So I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, guys, we are over actually on the northeastern part of the map and i'm i'm just a little undecided about what to where to build our eastern sea base um this um area here uh, 
from the water perspective, this little bay here would be just, just about perfect because um, it doesn't have, it doesn't have all the coral in the way, so we don't got to worry about that. All of these, all the stone and grass and all that shit, you know, we can clear out of here with the Anki. Um, and we could even go as far this direction as a behemoth gate will, you know, reach the surface of the water. So the idea being, let's say we run a, a couple behemoth gates across, you know, here or maybe a little further out, depending upon how far they stick up. And then that blocks anything, you know, from coming into the ocean. I seriously doubt anything big's going to spawn in this shallow area here. Um, you know, we could have manta rays like we do there, but we could, you know, we could have um, dinos, you know, guard dinos, like guard sharks and stuff like that, so to deal with that sort of thing. The downside to this place is that although we can make it really safe from water creatures, it's not going to be safe necessarily from land creatures. Um, I think the land creatures, for the most part, will not necessarily deliberately go in the water, but I wouldn't uh, bet my bank account on that. <laughs> so, you, so we would that, which means then that we would have to potentially wall off this whole bay, which we could do. Um, I just don't know. I don't know if I like that idea though. For aesthetic reasons, for one thing, plus it would be a hell of a lot of walls. Um. So that's that's one thing. Now, uh, the uh, the place I was originally planning on building, I decided not to because I just did not like the arrangement under the water. It was like right by the Eastern Sea Cave. I mean, almost directly above where the cave entrance is, but it just. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't like the way the water, the area was under the water. So I have another possibility. And um, if we go back around this corner, there are a couple of really small islands out in the water. One of them has kind of a natural um, sea uh, pin, if you will which could be ideal for for babies, for breeding. The island itself, we could maybe do some fun things with it in terms of... Uh, Seahawk is really loaded down with stuff, so you're kind of slow. Oh, I am keeping my eye open for better Ankies, too. Yeah, one or, what, or a 15, rather. Not a 115. I did Tamba 120 uh, yesterday, but it still didn't have very good stats, unfortunately. But anyway, um, this area over here could be a lot of fun because because what we could do is we could build like a beach hideaway, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but we could have some fun building on the cliffs with some I, man. I really wish we had like rope bridges and stuff like that. Um, but the place I'm talking about is right here. So, so it's got this little pin right here that's that's pretty much surrounded on on three sides from the water. And there's nothing in the sea that's going to be able to get in there. Because this is like super shallow right here. So nothing nothing's going to be able to get through there. Um uh, you know, nothing shark well, I don't think anything again. Um, this isn't a real large area, but it would certainly be large enough for, for breeding. And, you know, uh, almost all of this stuff here, I can clear out with the Anki. So, you know, some of the, we got a couple of the Saguaro corals, but they're all the way up against the wall. So I don't think they would really be a problem. And this would give us a lot of room for, and we would basically make it our breeding pin. But what we could then do is... Um, we can expand out this way, and we have a lot. Oh, stupid iffy. Let's try and kill that thing because I had one one steal my um canteen earlier. 
Well, that should be too far away for a shotgun, but this is arc. Arc doesn't. Yeah, Ark doesn't understand the shotguns are close-range weapons. So in this particular case, <laughs> that works in our advantage. <laughs> There's no way I should have hit that bird with a shotgun from that range. Oh, man, I love it. Anyway, so, so yeah, we could expand out here almost, well, maybe not this rock, but these smaller boulders we could easily clear out of the way with the Anki. And then, you know, we could build some kind of a pin and if we wanted to we could build it like all the way out to you know the drop off there and just put you know walls all the way along there and then we have all of this space in here that we could store our army you know uh it might be more than than we really need but the thing is is that that's the beauty of it though there's lots of room to expand if we do need extra room right um, so there's that option, and then even around, if we come around um, here, there's all of this, all of this room. Uh, so the idea being that we would put behemoth gates all along this shelf before the drop off, and then we just have tons and tons of room for the water dinos, for the big guys. And, you know, if we eventually get a Tusa or a Mosa or both or three of each or whatever. You know, lots of room for those, but we could also have a lot of fun, I think, with this little island here. We could build on this island, uh, and we'd have, like, little, you know, little platforms, uh, little shacks, walkways, and, you know, have, like, a little lookout on top, maybe another one up there, a little shack down here. Um, that could be so fun. I, I know that um, Ark Survival Evolve has, or at least had, a... A bridge mod which allowed you to add bridges and which included rope bridges I, I did check to see if that something like that was available for ASA about a week and a half ago I haven't looked recently um but like I said we could just have a lot of fun you know building something really cool here on this island with stairways, walkways, rope bridges. Well, it, rope bridges aren't going to happen unless there's a mod for it, but... Whoops. Um, so anyway, I, I'm kind of... I'm kind of leaning towards this because, you know, the other... The hole down here. Um, the other place, the bay, definitely has some pros for it in terms of the water itself but i just don't like the idea of having to build a big wall around that entire bay to keep the land dinos out and i don't trust a hundred percent you know that they that they wouldn't um you know come in the water and try and eat our stuff but yeah we could do some fun stuff here uh with this uh this island i think so I think this is going to be the plan, guys. Uh, and I'm going to try real hard to not destroy all of the vegetation on this island. Because, I, I mean, the underbrush will try and get rid of the grass and stuff. But definitely the trees in particular, I'd like to preserve them because it kind of adds to the charm of the place, you know. And then, you know, we could start with making this the, the, the starter pin and then just expand it as we need to. So I'm really liking that idea. Uh, M I M, and then this puts us just a little north of the eastern sea cave. It's only about 1,300 meters to the south of here, which isn't too far. If we look at the map, uh, the eastern sea cave is right there. Um, yeah, I'm kind of liking that idea. So I think that's what we're gonna do. I think this is gonna be our new home for our eastern sea base. Uh, looks like we got a yellow drop over on Carnal Island. And so, with that being said, um, I'm going to start setting up shop here and see if, I, you know, just putting things together. And I will, of course, you know, bring you guys back uh, in the next episode. I think we're probably out of time in this episode anyway. 
with an update on how we're doing out here. I want to just get it functional first and then, you know, and then we can uh, just spend time, have you know, maybe have a few building episodes here and there where we just do some really cool stuff. So what I envisioned, and this is very, very general, but basically what I envision is having like a little house up up there on that peak, one on that peak. In fact, you know what? Let's look at it from the air. And then some stuff down below with walkways and stairways and whatever. Um, you know, getting up to those those spots. So let's get up in the air a little bit. So we build there there's not really a, a whole lot to this one. So maybe this could be just like a little lookout tower up here and then we could have a walkway that leads over to here this is there's a little bit more stuff here so we could build like a little shack or a, almost even a lighthouse idea Ooh, yeah that'd be cool a lighthouse up here and then down somewhere probably in this area or maybe in this kind of middle spot here we could build a little shack um and even maybe have it expand out over into here and that's where we'll put, you know, like all of our equipment and stuff. I really like that idea. The more I think about it, I'm talking myself into it. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think that's what we'll do. I, I do. I think that's going to be cool. Um, there is one thing that we should be aware of here. Let's see if we can go grab that yellow drop before it disappears. The problem is Mojave is currently following Horny. Uh, so we need to tell it not to, otherwise it'll take off as soon as we land. There is one concern that we have to we have to think about. This uh, mountain off right up there, that's Forest Peak, and it has Giga spawns. Although it's not likely, it is certainly possible that Giga could come all the way down here and um, wreck our stuff. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know what we would do about that. I, I, I mean, obviously we could put up like metal, metal gates and stuff, and we might end up just doing that. But it would. I don't know how that would how that would affect the aesthetic, though. Is the thing, you know. So, but I'm excited to see you know what we can come up with with that that location. Um, I think it could be really cool looking. All right, yeah, anyway, let's go see if we can catch this yellow drop before it disappears. I have no idea how long it's been there. Oh, never mind. <laughs> it's gone. Um, so, yeah. That's the plan, Stan. That is the plan. So, guys, I'm going to get to work on this area and get it, like I said, I, I just want to get it functional first, and then as time goes on, we can expand it, make it look cool, add some stuff to it. And let me know what you guys think. Oh, that's just a megalodon. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the in the comments about this location. Um, if you're curious, I did look at that little island place too. There, there's kind of like a hidden um, little pond in the center of it, but it's it's too small to do anything with. Um, and then, you know, I, I kind of looked over there too. But the thing that I like, really like about this spot here is it's like I said, it's already kind of got a natural sea pen already in place you know, at least on three sides uh, that we can immediately make use of without having to, to do a whole lot in terms of securing it. So that really appeals to me. You know, we, we could also potentially put maybe a little building on this island here too. There's a little more room to build here. Um, but like I said, I want, I want to try and set this up if I can in such a way to where we don't take the trees out at least not the big palm trees um you know these smaller ones aren't I, i'm not too worried about them but the bigger ones i'd like to keep those in place if we can't because again it just adds to the aesthetic of the place so yeah i'll see what we can come up with and i'll, I'll bring you guys uh, or give you guys updates on how things are coming out here in the future episodes and with that i'm going to let you guys go here so thank you very much everybody for watching I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you did, uh, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.